Welcome back, CSE 3200, Yukon Stores. This is video three of chapter 12 on coroutines and databases. And our objective for this video, we're actually going to create a database. And there's many ways that we can create a database, but we are going to use the room library suggested and made by Google. There is a, um, there's a second Gradle file that we have never touched and we are going to have to go into that Gradle file and add the, uh, the bottom line id or .jetbrains.kotlin.capped version 1.6.10 apply false. Um, that is like an overarching Gradle file that gets loaded first. We'll then go into uh, our, the Gradle file module that we typically alter and we will have to put in the plugin that's highlighted here and then these um, three lines under dependencies. Okay, so let's go into this Gradle file here, the one we have yet to go into and we type in ID, uh, single quote, org.jetbrains.kotlin.kapt. Uh, the KAPT, by the way, stands for Kotlin Annotation Processing Tool. It is, um, it's a class that functions a little bit like R or view binding that we have used that will give us some um, uh, built-in functionality in a similar manner. Uh, let's see. Uh, then after the single quotes, we put in version and then back to single quotes for the version 1.6.10 uh, and those single quotes and apply false. And then go into the Gradle file that we normally go into to make the other changes. We need to go up to plugins and put in id dot or id uh, single quotes org dot jetbrains dot kotlin dot kapt and then fill in the dependencies implementation single quote Android X colon room colon room dash runtime colon 2.4.2. Um, I'm going to check that with my slides. Okay, um, the slides are telling me two different changes that I need to make. Uh, this was a dot, which is what I went there expecting, but I had forgotten about the uh, 2.5.0. Book says 2.4.2. And then we're gonna have a similar implementation Android X, uh, lost the room. Uh, this will say room, and it's going to go dash KTX, and then 2.5.0, I think that's fine. And then our last one is KAPT, Android X dot room. colon room dash compiled or compiler and let's go with the 2.5.0 let's see if that looks good I think it does let's sync okay um, I did have one typo and an R ended up there in front of the KTX but found that and it ran after I did the sync All right, so there are three steps to creating a room database. 
Uh, the first step is to annotate your model class to make it a database entry. That's going to be pretty straightforward, only involve a couple of lines of code. We need to get our data class back, crime, and we are going to annotate at entity. This indicates that the class defines a table or a set of tables in a database. Each row is going to be an individual crime, and each property, the ID, the title, the date, and is solved, will be a column. In front of the uh, val ID, we need to put at primary key. The data that is tied to um, this is the data that is tied to some unique element for every entry. You need uh, one. That way, we can query an individual crime using its ID. So let's get the imports for these. Alt Shift Enter and Alt Shift Enter, and that's it. Step one is complete. We've annotated the model to uh, make that the, uh, our data is now going to be a database entity. Okay, step two, creating a class that will represent the database itself. All right, so now we need to right click on com.bignerdranch.android.criminalintent and go new package and we are going to erase this and call it database. That's it. And then we get this new package down here and we want to right click on that package and we want to go new Kotlin class file and we're going to call this crime database. Looks good. All right, so now we are going to put at database in parentheses entities equals and then in squared brackets, capital crime, colon, colon, crime. And this is just going to give a list of uh, classes that the, uh, the database is going to have to use in order to make, its, to make itself. Um, we have only got one class here, so it's a list with one item in it. And then comma, version equals one, and end the parentheses, and then abstract class, crime database of type room database. So we're extending that class that is uh, a base class in the room package. Uh, beginning in parentheses and good. Okay. Uh, we got some imports to do. Uh, this should not be crime, this should be class. Okay. All right, the at database, this tells room that the class represents a database. And uh, I told you about this being a list of classes that we're going to use in order to manage the database. Um, we should always have a version number. We'll start with one. Uh, anytime we make any updates to the structure of our database, we will change that version number. And I believe we will do that at least one time before um, our application is final. 
So we did step two, creating the class that will represent the database itself. And now the final step, creating a type converter so that the database can handle your model data. Um, the databases can handle um, uh, primitives, it can handle enums, it can handle, um, it can handle other things, I believe, but it, it does not know how to handle or represent a, um, a date, for instance. And so we're going to have to basically convert from the, the, whatever we have in the database to make it a date. And then we're going to have to convert it back, you know, from the date structure to put it back in the database. So we are going to have to do both of those. So we're going to make a, another class. See, if we drill down in our database, we have the crime database. We are going to go right click database, new Kotlin class, and this is going to be crime type converters. Okay, looks good. Annotation at type converter singular, even though you have the option of plural and we use plural in the name of the class. Got the import. Okay. Function fun from date and argument date of type date returning a long return date dot time. I might need an import for that. Return date dot time. All right, import for date. And I believe we do want the java.util version. Okay, now we, um, we are going to convert it in the other direction. So we will go at type converter again. Uh, let me just grab this. And did I just lose a brace? I think I did. Uh, we will call this to date. And it will have milliseconds since the epoch. Hopefully that will auto complete. It does not. I have to check that. Uh, of type long. Returning a date object. And now I got my end brace back. All right, inside of these curly braces, return date. Uh, see that milliseconds since the epoch looks okay. So we'll see. Return date milliseconds oh that i got it that was our variable name all right and that should do it um let's see uh nope we got one more thing we have to do we have to go back into our crime database and we have to put in uh, type converters. So at type converter, uh, this is the plural version, crime type converters. Colon colon class. And we need an import for that. And we'll figure it out in the next video if there's been any mistakes. But at this point, we should have enabled our database because we have finished all three steps in the process. So let's see. In the next video, we will make a data access object. So I'll see you in that video next.